I purchased this jumbo yarn from my local Michaels store because it kind of looks like roving. It is 100% acrylic. It is called Chunky Lux Big and it is from Loops and Threads, which is the Michaels in-store brand. Today we're going to figure out how to spin this Chunky Lux Big roving and play around with some acrylic spinning. First of all, I want to say that I know passions can run high when it comes to acrylic and synthetic man-made fibers versus natural fibers. If you are someone who has committed to using natural fibers in your crafting, wonderful, go you. This video might not show the types of fibers that you would prefer to use in your crafting. However, some of these techniques would be applicable across the spectrum. You could use this with wool or other similarly drapey longer fibers like Surrey Alpaca. So to get a full spinning experience out of this fiber, I am going to show you two different drafting ways, drafting methods to use with this type of a fiber. And then I'm going to play around with plying this and I'm going to ply it in three different ways. That's a lot to accomplish in one video. We better get spinning. Always the first thing to check before we start to spin is staple length and characteristic of the fiber. I can tell you this is very silky feeling, it's very soft, and it's very slippery. Until it isn't. Acrylic is kind of strange that way. It feels very sleek and slippery, but then as soon as it gets enough twist for that friction to hold it together, bam, it's like glue, and suddenly it feels very sticky. Any bounce and spring that we get from acrylic is going to come from the yarn construction itself, not from the actual fibers. So that is something to keep in mind if you're working with acrylic. Especially if it's a hand-spun project, expect it to have more drape and perhaps be a little more dense. What is the length of the fibers we will be spinning? I think technically these are filaments. All right, here we are. Can't pull it apart. This is the length that we have for these fibers for spinning. And this is a fairly long length. If this was wool, we would say this is a long, this is a long staple. Uh, so why does that matter? That matters because when we are drafting, if we are holding onto the fiber within this space, we will not be able to draft out of this grip. So we need to make sure that we are keeping our hands farther apart or holding so loosely that there's absolutely nothing hanging up these fibers at all. Otherwise, we'll run into trouble when we're drafting. The two methods of drafting that I'd like to show you with this fiber is a short forward draw and spinning from the fold. So let's start with a short forward draw. I am using my vintage Ashford Traditional and it's giving me about seven and a half turns of the flyer per treadle. That's not a large amount of twist. That's fairly average, medium, kind of middle of the road pace for the spinning. This Viber does not need a lot of twist. When it has enough twist, it holds like glue and any more than that is just gonna make it very dense and ropey. So we wanna give it just enough twist. If you're a fast treadler, please slow it down by putting your drive band on your biggest, fattest whirl size, the slowest spin you can. To spin with a short forward draw, I'm going to keep my front fingers pinched. Let some of the twist in and then slide it back. S pull some of the fibers out, slide it back, pull some out, slide it back. And that's it. I am just going to pull some fibers out, slide my fingers. This feels like a pretty good rate for this fiber. The pace between my down treadle and how much and how far forward I'm pulling the fibers. Once I get that into a good rhythm, I will want to check and see how this yarn looks when it's plied. This is a yarn you will want to ply. Unlike wool, you can't really set the twist of an acrylic. It is at its essence a plastic and it doesn't behave the same way that natural fibers do. 
But as long as you're aware of that, you can work around that. And so plying it is what will balance out that twist so that it doesn't have quite so much energy and, and <laughs> floop around all over, just like this. This is what the two ply yarn will look like if I continue spinning this way. And I think that's pretty. It's lovely. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to continue spinning this way. Now, whichever way is comfortable for you, I'm holding the fiber with my left hand and I'm drafting forward with my right hand. But if you prefer, you can hold the fiber with your right hand and draft forward with your left hand. It doesn't matter. Whatever is the most comfortable for you. Now, let's look at spinning from the fold. We are going to pull a section off the end of this roving. This is about one full length of the fibers in this roving yarn. <laughs> I'm going to take this and fold it over my finger. And now this is what I'm going to spin from. This method is gonna give me a yarn that's a little bit messier because not everything is facing the same way and going into the wheel the same way. This is folded over. So I might have some little spots where the loop kind of catches up with itself and some spots where it seems to appear a little more fuzzy. It's not gonna be quite as smooth. There's a little more fuzz. It looks, it has the appearance of being a little softer. And so if that's the kind of yarn you are going for, that will work just fine when you spin from the fold because that's what you'll get. I don't need to control how much fiber is coming off my finger as long as I pull forward, pull forward, pull forward, just at a good rate, a good rhythm, similar to what I had before. It's going to give me a very similar yarn. Although I do feel like this yarn is a smidge softer. It is not quite as dense. The feeling of it is a little bit lighter. If the yarn pulls away from you, you might want to turn your tension down a little bit. It might be too strong, but if you need to rejoin, and then of course, when you pull off another section to continue spinning from the fold, you are just going to lay the, the end of it, the tip of it, make sure it's, you know, fuzzy so it has things to grab onto. You're just gonna lay it with the other fibers that you're spinning over the fold and ta-da, keep on going. That's all it takes. You just kind of pinch them off together and then keep on spinning. Those are my two favorite methods for drafting a slippery and uh, silky fiber like this. So I'm going to fill up my bobbins and then I'm going to show you three different ways to ply with this yarn. And I think that they will each have a unique and very interesting effect. So I'll be right back as soon as this is all spun up and ready to ply. Before we ply, I wanted to pop back in for a little troubleshooting tip. And that would be how to know if you have too much twist in your fiber. My wheel is turning right now and I'm not drafting. I'm just hanging on because I'm going to show you what too much twist looks like. Here it is. Do you see it? I have these little curly corkscrews happening on my yarn. That means that that section of yarn is over twisted, too much twist. So what do we do? Well, I can let some out. I can draft faster. I can change to a slower pulley on my whorl. There are a lot of things you can do, but basically it means that you need to slow down your spinning. Let's ply this yarn three different ways. The first way is that we are going to ply it back on itself. You can do this from a plying bracelet or from a center pull ball. And of course you can always spin two separate bobbins and ply them together. Any of those methods would work what we're looking at is this yarn plied back on itself. That's a two ply. Here's my center pull ball. 
it's tiny but we're kind of just playing around with this sampling this so we'll see what we can get off of this cute little thing and to uh, answer a question that I get very frequently which is what do I do with my ends they're flooping everywhere hold on to them hold on to them tight while you're moving it from one thing to another don't just let your ends dangle because they will untwist themselves it is the ply that is going to keep them from unraveling and so until they are safely tucked away into their ply you really have to hold on to those if it does get hung up on something like mine just did take care of that gently if you start yanking on it you run the risk of collapsing your whole ball and making a big snarly mess Well, that plying was a little messy. Remember when I was spinning from the fold and I said that it was making it a little fuzzier and a little softer looking and it had some of those wispies on it? Well, those were the wispies that were catching on their friends as it was coming out of the center pole ball. And it gave me a few snarls that I had to work through as I was plying. So maybe if you are spinning as a short forward draw, then this center pole ball plying would be great, but if you're spinning from the fold and you want a two ply yarn from this, I would really recommend doing two separate bobbins just to avoid that yarn barf and all of those snarls I ran into. So that was a good thing we discovered today. The second way that we are going to ply this yarn is with this Red Heart. This is Red Heart Unforgettable and I really love the colors. That is something about acrylic. You can get these really vibrant, shiny shades of color that's difficult to achieve on natural fibers. I mean, visually, it's just so pretty. I wanted to see what this would look like plied with the hand spun acrylic in a two ply that would give it sort of a variegated effect because of how the color moves throughout this fiber. I'm just holding the yarns together and just plying as I would for any other two ply. This Unforgettable is a single and it was also spun with Z twist, which is the way that I spun the acrylic myself. So now I'm going to ply it with an S twist. Always, if you are planning to ply with something that's already made, double check the direction that it is because you don't want to end up having things going the wrong way. And then finally, I'd like to try a three ply. I'm going to use two strands of the acrylic that I just spun. And then I'm also going to use one strand of this. This is called Eco Cozy. It is also from Loops and Threads and it is 100% recycled polyester. I did want to showcase that there are some more environmentally friendly options, but this has a much thicker diameter than the yarn we've been spinning. And I wanted to see if we could make kind of a neat corkscrew effect by plying two of the thinner strands of the hand spun acrylic with one of this thicker strand of polyester. Let's see what this looks like. I have two bobbins of the spun acrylic over here on my right, and I have this polyester uh, eco yarn over here on my left. So you can see what I'm doing here. I have my fingers separating each of these plies as they're coming together, and I'm bringing them all in at the same rate. I'm not coming in sideways with one or anything. I'm just uh, keeping them separated and pulling them forward as I add twist and just creating this very simple three ply with a very cool visual effect. Here they are, the two ply plied on itself, 
the two ply plied with a commercial uh, acrylic yarn and then the three ply with a polyester. I think of all of these, this three ply with the polyester is my surprise favorite. And it's really squishy. It's really, really soft. I would enjoy having this in a cowl or a hat. Um, I think it would be very comfortable to wear if you had allergies especially and you found wool to be very itchy. I think this might be something that would work well for that. So I hope that you found some inspiration and maybe some ideas for your future spinning projects. Let me know what you think about spinning acrylic and also plying with commercial yarns. Do you have any projects that you've already done? Let me know. How did it work for you? If you enjoyed this little adventure in spinning acrylic, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more spinning videos. I'll see you in the next one. Happy spinning, friends!